What happens when you get into debt? We got debt, big hard money. And you can't. I'm going to struggle to pay this. Or won't pay it back. It doesn't matter what you want, sir. Unfortunately, that's the law. We meet the High Court enforcement agents who are pushed to their limits. They're evil! You have to die to hell! Well, I'll smash the window then. It's false imprisonment. Dealing with desperate debtors. Hello? In dramatic situations. You want to stand here like a big man? Leave it. Talk to me. Talk to me. Push me about. We meet the people who are losing their homes. I don't know where I'm going to stay for the night. You've got till 10 o'clock to be packed <laughs> out. And their possessions. The desk are going. <laughs> Everything. It's OK. okay. Because whatever happens... No, you stay there, my friend. If you can't pay, they'll take it away. Recent reports by a leading debt charity show that sole traders are increasingly getting into debt. The figures reveal they have some of the highest levels of borrowing in the UK, putting them under serious financial pressure. Stuart McCracken and Elmore Victor are High Court enforcement agents. They've been working together for over a year, seizing property and collecting debts. Today, they're in Morecambe, Lancashire. So what's this next case, Vic? It's Morecambe Textiles. Ah, uh, Morecambe Textiles. This isn't Stuart's first encounter with the debtor, Mr Laid, the owner of Morecambe Textiles. Me and my previous colleague, Ian, um, arrived at this address and uh, he was very, very aggressive from the offset. Oh, right. He tried to push me out of the house. Right. Um, we called the police. On Stuart's previous visit, Mr Laid agreed to pay off his debt in monthly instalments. But he's defaulted and still owes just over £1,000. Now the team has a High Court writ to collect the money. Every time that I go back to a job where I've already been to before and I know that they're a tricky customer, so to speak, that's the bit of the job that I thrive off to try and get this case fixed. As Stuart and Vic approach the address, they spot Mr Laid and his family leaving the estate. Is that him? Yeah, that's him. The family car is a potential asset. Stuart reacts immediately and blocks Mr Laid from leaving. Oh, sir. Awesome. <sighs> it's his uh, Morgan Textiles. Finished. Shut down. Are you able to go back and we'll have a quick chat about this? No. For what reason? Yeah. For the agents, it makes no difference whether his company is trading or not. Mr. Laid has already signed a controlled goods agreement, giving Stuart and Vic the right to remove his assets if he doesn't pay in full today. You've got a controlled goods agreement, sir. It, it does mean, so that in our power we are able to force entry into the property. Because at the end of the day, this vehicle has been seized. It's still been seized, it's not yeah, my vehicle. so it's been seized. It's not vehicle. But if the car belongs to Mr Laid's partner, the team can't take it away. Can you go and get those I documents, then? Can you go and get those documents? We need to quickly go, because we need to um, uh, control the vehicle. <laughs> As Stuart and Vic approach the family home, they spot a second vehicle parked outside. It's another asset they could seize if Mr. Laid can't or won't pay. What about the vehicle there as well? Right, OK, so we need to see documentation for that. Got fuck all my names, yeah? Mr. Laid also claims the second car isn't his. So we need to see some documentation of that, OK? Because what we're going to do is, OK, unless you make some sort of payment, then what we're going to do is we're going to force entry into the property. Force entry into the property? Yeah, OK, no problem, I'll do that now, then. Oi! Fuck off. You are? Fuck off. Yeah, we got a big hard man, eh? You are? Wait, wait, wait. It's fine. Come on, come, come, Dan. No, fuck you, Dan. Fuck off. We can sort this out. No, look at it. So fuck off. You can take that off your ass. The business shut down. Go to the market and have a look. Go on. I'm not going anywhere. I'm fucking hell in the same, but I can prove it as well. And today, we're not going down the situation again, sir. It happened last time. Yeah. And we still managed to get into your property. Well, you fucking not. Don't push me again. Well, you got to do it. Don't push me again. Mr. Laid's partner passes him the vehicle documentation. That's the registration document, can't it? Yeah. This, this document is not proof of ownership. Of course it is. No, well, it says they're black and white, sir. See that? This document is not proof of ownership. It's a registration document. Okay. It's got a fucking loan out, it? Mm -hmm. See documentation for that, then? 
What do you mean documentation? That's it. You got a loan out on it. You have documentation for it. Well, listen, don't get smart. I'm not getting smart at all. No, go away. Shut the It's not going anywhere, sir. The vehicle's not going anywhere. Fuck it is. It's not. Hey, you tell me what to fucking do. Fuck off. Mr. Lade's partner insists she bought the car with a bank loan. I took the loans out for the car. Right. I understand that, but have you got any documentation for that loan amount says for the vehicle? I took the loan out. I spoke to the man on the phone. He asked mm. what I took it out for. But you'd have a loan document, but we need, to, we, we need to see the documentation. If the car is on a finance agreement, the team can't seize it. Vic runs a check. Hi, Ed, you're right, mate. Yeah, not bad. Uh, can you do the HPI for me, please? Uh, v for Victor, N for November. While Stuart looks over the paperwork from the bank. I took that out for the 18 months ago. You took pictures of that last time. Yeah, it's only an application. It, there's oh, nothing to say. Oh, I'm not getting smart at all. I'm not, I've got a job to do. Stuart isn't convinced that there is a loan. Just phone the so, police, Carl. Yeah, phone the police. I'll wait here. I'll show them the control goods agreement that you've signed, sir. Mr. Lade gets the police on the phone. Yeah, but they're on computer threatened behaviour. Smile all you want, sir. They're threatening to take season goods, which is actually the business is shut down now. I'm off, I'm off sick, I've been off sick for the last year. Do you say the police are coming? Yeah, OK, we'll wait for them then. And once I show them the control goods agreement, sir, they will then grant me access into the property, OK? And we'll also be taking control of this vehicle not, and that vehicle you're as well. You're not having my car. You're not, you're not having my don't, car. Don't get aggressive with me. What you got to do about it? What you got to do about it? What you got to do about it? Don't be aggressive. What you got to do about it? Do about it? Do about it? Fucking dickhead. You're you can stand up all you want, sir. It's not going to change the situation. But you've signed a control goods agreement. You have. Do, do you want me to show you it? I'll show you it now. Yeah, go on, I'll show you it now. I'll show you it now. See, that's your signature there, sir. So see there, 500 per month for eight months, starting the 68th, which is when I last was inside your property, sir. That's been bid, nearly. No, it's not. There's still £1,068 left. That's why we're here today. If you can't afford the 500, that's fine. I can't afford the fuck all. Vic confirms Stuart's suspicions about the loan. At this moment, this vehicle is free of finance. Yeah, so if that loan was connected to it, it would have shown that it's on finance. What? I'm... So the vehicle will be removed. I'm not going to sort of this, sir. So you need to find some sort of way of raising some funds to try and get this clear. Mr. Lade still seems reluctant to pay. Try some sort of raising some funds. And decides to take drastic action. Is there no way, sir, you can make a payment? He and his partner each take a young child and lock themselves in the cars. If that's a tactic that the defendants want to use, then so be it. I can't believe that anybody would get their own family involved to try and avoid paying an outstanding high court writ. I mean, I find it absolutely absurd. With a baby in one car and a toddler in the other, Stuart and Vic are unable to seize the family vehicles. We have to take control of the goods. It's as simple as that. What started as a simple debt recovery case has escalated into a dramatic standoff. Thirty minutes into the standoff, the police arrive on the scene. Hello. Hello Hi there, officer. Sir. Here we go. That's myself. That's your ID, is it? Yeah. High court enforcement. High court yes, enforcement. Right. Big lads then. Stuart briefs the officer with the terms of the writ. And that's the agreement there, £500 for eight months, starting the 6th of the 8th, 14. We want to try and sort some, some agreement out with the gentleman. OK, yeah. I'll just speak to him, tell him what the situation is. Yeah, no problem at all. Yeah. Shortly after the police arrive, Mr Lade emerges from his car with his accountant on the phone. Hello there. I believe I'm talking to the accountant with regards to Morgan Textiles. Mr Lade now claims that it's his closed-down limited company who's liable for the debt, and not him. Well, the writ itself is in the name of Morecambe Textiles, not Morecambe Textiles Limited. So it's a sole trader. Yes, yeah, so it's not limited, I'm afraid. Uh, I just want to thank you for your time. All right, I'll pass you back now. Mr Lade's tactic hasn't worked. The fact it's against him personally means that we are liable to either get locksmith, remove into the house, or remove the two vehicles. After an hour on site, Mr Lade makes Stuart an unusual offer. Sorry? Not, not interested in the wallpaper, sir. It needs to be, it needs to be a payment. 
I thought you said you weren't working, sir. So what are you doing with what, what are you doing with the wallpaper then? The wallpaper is leftover stock from his closed-down business and worth almost four thousand pounds. So how have you paid for that then? It's not been paid for. That's what I'm saying. So we wouldn't be taking control of them. She hasn't paid for them, so it don't belong to you. Stuart's patience is running out. You need to offer something. I don't want to be here all day holding up your family. Yeah, well, I'll give you 30 minutes. I'll wait in the van, see, see what you can do, and then I'll speak to you off, and I'll do my best to try and help you out. We will work with you, Mr. Lane. Right, OK. The team start to make progress. If I give you 100 quid a day and 50 quid a month, that's all I can do. Because I'm, uh, I'm off ill at the moment, sick. Can't you do 100 pound a month? It's going to be, they're not going to, because, because it's 1,000 pound 68, right? No, I can afford me. She's going to give me 50, I'll give you 50, 100 quid today. Yeah. And I'm going to offer 50 quid to 75 quid a month. Let me phone the office and let's see what they say, all right? If the offer is not accepted, the team may have to start taking goods. Right away. You've said 100 pound a month, but it needs to be 250 today. Something we can do. In that case, it'll be removable goods. That's what they've said. Right, so 250 you want? Yeah. And, 100 and then £100 a month. £100 a month, yeah. After claiming he can't pay for nearly two hours, Mr Lade finally agrees to the deal. And the standoff is over. Have you got your card there? I didn't realise you made me skip now. Yeah. Where's that accent from? The priest. The priest. We didn't want it, so we just had a bit no. of trouble. My granny and granddaughter from Lockerbie. Yeah, Lockerbie. 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 Small world, and I'm from Carlick, you saw. Yeah, it's gone through fine. Yeah. All right, shake my hand. All right, see you later. To come away with a payment from somebody who was prepared to physically um, attack a High Court enforcement agent gives me the drive, passion, and adrenaline of the job that, that I enjoy. No, no, it's a pump. It's not, it's a fucking <laughs> smash. There we go. Oh, goodness gracious. According to a new survey, repossession rates hit record levels last year, with 115 evictions taking place every day. A leading housing charity now reports that evictions by private landlords are the most common cause of homelessness. High Court enforcement agents Paul Bowhill, Steve Pinner and his son Ben are in London to carry out an eviction. The job that we're now going to is a ground floor flat in South Croydon and the tenant is thought to be an elderly man. The landlord wants to convert the property into one bedroom flats and increase his return. I would like to say that I will be compassionate and sympathetic, but I'll only still have an hour to get out. Notice of the eviction has already been sent to the tenant by the county court, but the landlord has upgraded it to the high court to speed up the eviction. So the enforcement agents have come without warning. No one seems to be at home. The team start to break the lock, something the eviction notice allows them to do. There we go. Oh, dear. It stinks. He's obviously got a cat. Because there's tins of tuna everywhere. Here, yeah, kitty, kitty, kitty. But the house isn't empty. Good morning, sir. We're from High Court. We have a repossession order for your property. Can we have a chat? Wait, we'll put a bailiff first, I'll take it to the council. Yeah, we'll give you that. Oh, push you the door, then. There you go. You can't be breaking in, right? I can. You're supposed to give me so many days to transfer There's no days, it's immediate. Finally, the tenant answers the door. You're kicking okay. at my door, you're scaring my cats. He ain't an old man. 
close that door, mate. Let's do this properly, shall we? No, you stay there, my friend. Just stay there, all right? The council told me, wait till you get a bailiff's letter. That should take two... It should give you a date when you've got to be gone by, which is two weeks, and you're trying to get in. Huh? You've not received anything yet. Another happy chap. The tenant, Simon, knew the landlord wanted him out, but had no idea it would happen today. The landlord has chosen to transfer the proceedings to the High Court and there is no provision within the system to give you notice that we come in. I was waiting for a bailiff's letter, which apparently... No, no, OK, me... I did. I heard that, and I do understand it. Right. But it's now been transferred to the High Court, which means that you have to leave today. Simon has one hour to gather his essentials and leave. But, oh, I can't leave today. What? I'm going up to Sheffield in, in, in um, tw 20, past, 20 past six minutes past one, my thing. Bury my aunt tomorrow. I'm going to be gone for three days. Could you just look and see I'm packed? Yes. Yeah. Have a look then, please, sir. No, no, but that's OK. I can accept that. Not only was his black suit hanging up in a bag ready to travel, but he had his return tickets to the north of England where the funeral was going to be. I can't believe this. It's a good job I'm still here. Or she would have done what? We would have broke in, changed the locks and left a note for you to contact what about us. My cats? Despite the funeral, the eviction must take place today. The procedure that we follow is you need to take whatever belongings you need to last you a few days mm -hmm. today. Um, I'm going to a funeral, bro. Well, you were going anyway, weren't you? Yeah. Right, but there's no reason. you just got to make other arrangements for your cats, that's all. Where's the drill gun? Where's the drill's there? Steve gets ready to change the locks, while Paul starts a routine inventory of the house. Just a bad way to live. Now, I'm disgusted to show you this, but you may as well see it. I refuse to clean it. I was waiting for the council to see all the damp everywhere. Damp there, and there's the piece de resistance. And I can't touch it because it makes me poorly. And this has been going on for six years. Shit old place. Yeah, disgusting. A lot of the properties that we go to, bear in mind, they're probably lower end properties anyway. The, bene the tenants are on benefits. Their standard of living is never going to be high. But I do find, in at least half the cases, their living conditions are absolutely appalling. A complicated situation is beginning to unravel. I've got COPD as well. What's that? Lung disease. That's why I'm, the, the council should be rehousing me. All right. Is it catching? Huh? Is it catching? No, I'm not worried oh, about that's it. all right. <laughs> Didn't mind me asking. No, I, no, I, no. Think, I think you'd be a bit more worried about catching something off him. <laughs> With his illness and the poor living conditions, Simon has been asking the council to rehouse him for the last six years. The council have told him, come and look, come and look how I'm living, it's affecting my health. Nobody, did. Nobody cares, my friend, nobody cares. The councils, in my experience, do nothing to help single men of working age, unless they've got a physical, a social or mental issue. There's no obligation to house them, and they don't. The clock is ticking. Simon calls the housing office to tell them he's now homeless. See, right, we're trying to get counsel. Now, these are even worse than bloody solicitors. Yeah, good morning. I've got the bailiffs here. This is a shock to me, as it's a shock to you. The question is, are they going to rehouse you or not? You haven't called me. I don't, I've been calling you. Let's say I'm going to change it up now and find out from them, OK? No. Hello, yes. Yeah, it's Paul Bowhill, my High Court enforcement agent. The landlord will make arrangements to come back and get his property out, but he does need to leave now. So, I mean, is there any accommodation arrangements that you've made for him? I really don't think we have anything for him, but I'm going to be speaking to a manager. Despite being evicted, Simon is still not a housing priority. 
my conversation yeah. with the lady in the council office. Yeah. It isn't guaranteed that they're going to rehouse no, you. No. If you remember nothing else about what I've said, yeah, no. other than yeah. please be aware that it might all go wrong. Yeah. All right. Fine. With nowhere to go, Simon now faces being out on the streets. I've got no family down here. I, I mean, I'm going to say my family is in Sheffield. She's just passed away now. I've got a grandmother out in Dominica, and that's it. It's just me, as it has been for the last eight years in here. The eviction is almost complete, but Paul is concerned about Simon's welfare. Is the council are not going to rehouse him? Of course it? they're not. Oh, we need to know if there are any options on this. Then we shouldn't really, though, should we? Why not? Well, we don't normally do it. It's very rare that we alter the course of the eviction, and we will always take, but we will always take into account absolutely genuine circumstances. Moved by Simon's situation and his aunt's funeral, Paul wants to see if there's a chance the landlord might give him some extra time. Hello, it's Paul Bowhill. I'm telling it him because it is the possibility. If you just say no, that's the answer. Well, I, it's your choice, that is. You know him better than I do. Yeah, we can take possession now. Yeah. All right, OK, that's fine, no problem. Thank you very much. Bye. Due to the exceptional circumstances, the landlord agrees to give Simon one more week. OK, we'll be back on Wednesday. Right. So when we come back on Wednesday next week, yeah. there can be no argument. You've been given a period of grace to get your property out. Top mate. Simon's been given a second chance. But in seven days' time, the team will be back. If he's still in the flat, Paul won't be so understanding. I don't want you and me to fall out. No, we won't, mate, no. But if we have to, we will. You've just done the right thing. I'll do the right thing by you. Right. You yeah. take care, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. A new survey has revealed that the recent policy of paying housing benefit directly to tenants has led to increasing cases of rent arrears. As a result, many landlords are no longer accepting people on benefits. Hammersmith, London. Paul Bowhill and Steve Pinner are on the road again, this time to evict a tenant who owes thousands of pounds in unpaid rent. This is slightly unusual this morning, although we're not collecting it. There's 11 grand's worth of arrears on a flat. Uh, it's just here, somewhere. 45. Let me see That's about after renting her flat out through Hammersmith Council 11 months ago... Hello, pleased nice to meet you. Landlady Miradula Shuri is £11,000 out of pocket and wants the tenant out. If you keep back, sit in the okay. car, yep. just yep. while we go through the ritual dance to start with, because yep. if you're visible, yep. it just creates a diversion. Perfect. Yeah, right, Thank lovely. You, Thank you. Paul and Steve are not instructed to collect the unpaid rent. They're here to evict the tenant. There doesn't seem to be anyone in. So once again, Steve gets his tools and starts forcing the lock. Hello? Hello? High Court Enforcement. Yeah, could you open the door, please? Um, what is happening here? You need to open the door so we can talk to you. We have some paperwork for you. Would you like to open the door, madam? We are High Court Enforcement agents, and we have a writ to repossess this property. OK, and um, when are you doing that? This very minute. Madam, can you open the door? I can't talk through the door. <laughs> No, we're going to give you an hour to get your personal effects together and then you can make an arrangement and collect everything else. 
my baby's still sleeping. Madam, can you open the door so we can talk to you? Are you going to make me leave? Well, yeah. You're much better today than me. Will you open the door, please, or otherwise we'll break it down? There is no stopping this happening today. So what are you telling me? property is now repossessed so we've got an hour please to get your belongings together and then you'll have to make an arrangement with the landlord to come and pick the rest out there's about eleven thousand pounds in outstanding rent that's due the bailiffs are here and they said i have an hour to get my things out <laughs> the tenant adana calls her yeah. mother i've got an hour Today's events have come as a shock. It's not fair that you owe the landlady £11,000 either. You've had plenty of warning of this. This has been going on for at least... I have a baby. I'm a single mother. I've had nine months. I've had no... It's not been nine months because the landlords keep lying. It's not been nine months. Have you paid the rent? It's been I've been paying the difference. There's £11,000 on this warrant. I know how Is that a lie? No, I'm not lying. I'm not okay. saying that's a lie. I'm sorry, the can I stop you there? I've can I the stop you there? Advice it's you now know. 20 past nine. You've got till 10 o'clock to be packed in. <laughs> so if you'd like to get on packing. OK, all tears and all the usual, as expected. Adana receives housing benefit directly from the council, but the landlady claims that she was in arrears after only one month. I kept saying, I told you, you must pay the housing benefit directly to me. But she has to process the paperwork. So she's been getting £800 a month, exactly. housing benefit. She's been pocketing she's been housing. She's been living on that. Exactly. She didn't respond to a single text, phone call, or letter, or email. Just went completely off the radar. Can been we make this clear? She's... There is no blame on you. Yeah. You're the victim thank in this you. circumstance, I, I, and I acknowledge that. Thank you very much. No, I do. That's nice, because often... Because you're never going to get the money. It's exactly. It's going to be a complete waste of time even thinking exactly. about it. Adana's mother arrives to help with the move. Try not to take everything, because you're up against it. The flat is full of clothes and toys. My friend's coming with his car, so we can just... Yep, leave OK. Yeah. Paul sees many evictions, where claims are made about tenants withholding benefit payments from landlords. A tenant who's choosing not to pay the money direct to the landlord is going to be anywhere between 800 and 1200 pound a month better off so those are the tenants who've got a 57 inch television in every room 20 or 30 pairs of shoes designer handbags and they aren't paying any rent which is why they can afford it oh my god designer bags did i did i pay for that <laughs> the NY. possibly and all that quite possibly adana is now homeless It'll be up to the council to provide emergency accommodation for her and her baby daughter. OK, that's us done. We're about to lock up. Thank you. Very happy with what you've achieved today. Thank you. Thank you. Despite the economic recovery, new figures reveal many businesses are still struggling. With over 100,000 county court judgments issued in 2014. Fleetwood, Lancashire. High Court Enforcement Agents Stuart McCracken and Elmore Victor are on their way to serve a writ on entertainment's provider Stephen Rayner. So it's going to be DJ Mobile Disco. Yeah. He can, of course, be a clown. You know what's going to happen, but you're going to press the doorbell and water's going to switch out. Stephen owes £1,650 after losing a court case against a customer. There he is, entertainment. Big van. Much of the balance. 1658.94. 1658, you'd get that for that. 
the company van could be seized if the defendant can't pay today. Do me a favor, mate, get a comp on that. Uh, I, I wish you would do it, mate. Yeah? Uh, your clamps and me, we just don't get on. Here you go, here you go, no, I'll do it. Been through some times, me and this comp. There's a double cab with the same name on it in the garden. Might be worth more, mate. There's what? Double cab. Same name on it. Stuart makes sure the more valuable vehicle doesn't go anywhere. And Vic goes to see if anyone's home. Uh, so, out, Mr. Eh? Yes, Mr. Reynolds, yeah. High Court Enforcement. Uh, I'm here to execute a High Court writ. I'm from Direct ah. Collections Bailiff Limited. Yeah. Outstanding amount we need to collect today is 1,658. Ah. Oh, it's, no, it's been caught. Has been to court, so yeah, yes. Has been to court is 650 quid. That's why we're here, because it hasn't been paid. It's the CCJ that hasn't yeah, been paid. Yeah, it's 1,600 and somewhere. Stephen didn't pay his county court judgment. So now the claimants have taken it to the high court, almost trebling the debt. Mm, fact of the matter is, sir, unless the balance is paid in full today, we'll be taking control of the goods. The dispute was over entertainments Stephen provided at a wedding. You see, they've gone down the legal route, which they're in, in, yeah, entitled to do. Stuff. The bride and groom claimed he failed to turn up at the right time. Stephen and the groom argued, and the police were called. Police just said, it's some of yours, some of theirs. I mean, obviously, it's bad communication between you, the bride and the groom. Obviously, it went in their favour, it's bad communication. That's what they got me on. Stephen must pay the £1,650 High Court writ today. I am really struggling £200 a week. I haven't got that kind of money. Don't have to spare £50 a week. So the money I get, £200 a week, I mean, working tax credits goes out between me, me bills and all that kind of yeah. stuff. If Stephen can't pay, the team are entitled to seize the pickup truck to offset the debt. But first, they need to check it's not on finance. Hi, Mike, can you do HPI for me, mate, please? Uh, Rainers Entertainment, November, Yankee, Oscar. Vic starts to put the pressure on. I don't want to remove your vehicle, I'm going to be honest with you, but I've got no choice. I've got to execute this route. See what you can do, make a phone call, see if you can speak to someone that can help you, perhaps. Stuart discovers the pickup truck is on long-term finance. 15 months, friggin' hell. As it's on finance, Stuart can't take it. So he turns his attention back to the company van. Hey, can you do me another one, mate? It is battered, John, I'm not going to lie. It's not in a good state, but it's roadworthy and uh, get something for it anyway. Yeah, all right, mate, I'll clamp that and immobilise it. The van isn't on finance, but its value might not cover the total debt. Stuart has a hunch. There's Bouncy Castle higher on the side and I've seen on the back of uh, the L200 DJ Rayner. And uh, I'm a DJ myself, so I know DJ equipment at like the back of my hand, so... Uh, Hopefully he's got a nice, nice set of decks in there uh, I can work with or something like that, I don't know. Ah, bingo. Right, we've got a set of speakers, a few active speakers. Bouncy Castle, fantastic. It's exactly what I needed to see. The good thing is, it's not going anywhere because it's clamped. Right, that'll do, let me get the inventory sheet out. It is amazing what's locked behind closed doors, quite literally. Um, I never expected to see a van full of uh, bouncy castles, but that's a first for me. I wanted to go on it myself, to be honest. I've uh, given him half an hour yeah. to raise some funds. He's not going to raise it, mate. He's, he's got nothing. He's on 200 quid a week. Right, I've opened the van. Yeah. It's full of bouncy castles. Yeah. I don't know how much a bouncy castle is. They're not cheap. They're not, are they? You're not talking 500 quid for a bouncy castle, are no. you? are talking I would 1,500 think... to two grand, aren't you? Yeah, depending on the size and that and uh, condition. The equipment might just cover the debt, but without it, Mr. Rayner won't have much of a business left to run. The guy's got on my DJ gear it for the weekend, you say. Mm. Like I said, all, all the goods in there will be, will be taking control I'll of I need them well. for work, you say. I yeah, it's, it's, they'll still be taking control of, sir. Right. So you need to try and raise some funds. Yeah, so I'm working the best I can, do you know what I mean? There's only so much you can do. When you're working, when you've got a bad reputation, do you know what I mean? People yeah. slam you off all over the internet saying, you've done this, you've done that, you spread lies all over about your company and stuff like that. Yeah. I'm doing the best I can to keep a roof over my family's head, do you know what I mean? Yeah. When you're in that profession and it's 100% about reputation, being in that situation, I, I did feel for him. 
once a CCJ has been put against you, you are liable to have a High Court writ put against you as well. So you need to sort that situation out sooner rather than later. I mean, I am working. I am working two nights a week at two regular pub contracts. What I'm doing as well, doing kids' parties and bits and bobs. Yeah. Do you know what I mean, so if you take the vehicle out, I can't even settle the 1650 in the future, can I, with you? If Mr. Rayner doesn't come up with a payment in half an hour, he stands to lose everything he's worked for. Now, the deadline is almost up. Vic asks him to pay one last time. Your first priority now is to try and raise the funds. That's the only way to stop this, going, this action going any further. You've got the power to actually close down a business and to take control of goods. And they will either collect it in pounds and pence or will collect it in goods. So it's entirely up to themselves which way they want to go down. They have set me van with me. I'm not working this weekend, obviously. After being around with customers, I say, so unfortunately, um, this has happened. Obviously, I've got nothing. I can't supply the kids party this weekend. As Stuart starts to list the goods in the van, Stephen reappears with his father-in-law on the phone. I'll have a word with him now and see what they say. Yeah, I'll put him on the phone to you now. Yep, yeah. who's this? All right, OK. Uh, hello? Hiya. Hello there, so you through to Mr McCracken, I can help. I'm at work at the moment. Right. But I've got a credit card, it's at home. I've definitely got it, I, I can assure you that. I'm right. None of me. Um, I understand you're trying to. I, I, I understand that you're trying to help. Business, aren't you? you yes. Know what I mean? Yeah, it's. Uh, so we'll, you, we haven't got a choice, bit, so you say so. It's a bit naughty to take his business, but you do what you have to do. You yeah. Know? Yeah, exactly I right. So. You're on. But there's a problem. When can this payment be made, sir? Because we can take um, payments over I'm the phone. Back, I don't finish work till half four. My card's at home. Right. If, if my boss comes back earlier, I can nip on for it. It's. Well, the, we would have taken control goods by then, sir. So. I'll pass right. you back now. Stuart has his reasons for rejecting the offer. The reason why we can accept a payment at half four is because what happens now, we leave, the van goes to work, we don't see the DJ gear again. We're here now to take control of the goods, the goods are safe in the van, we've comped it, we ain't leaving until we get the full balance, it's as simple as that. The team gives Stephen's father-in-law 30 minutes to make the payment or they'll take the company van and all its contents. So we'll go wait in our van, like I said, and then we'll wait from there, all right? The team play the waiting game. A payment over the phone, is it? And their patience pays off. Hello there, sir. Did you say you were able to make payments on the phone, is that right? OK, I'll give the card hold copy um, uh, to uh, Stephen, and then he can pass that on to you. All right, then, so I'll pass you back now. Thanks for the payment. Right, thank you. Well, there you go. There we go, sorted. Thanks to his father-in-law, Mr Rayner's business can continue trading. Cracking result, that. One week ago, Paul and Steve went to evict a tenant from his home in Croydon. No, you stay there, my friend. Just stay there, all right? The team found the tenant just about to leave for a funeral. I'm going up to Sheffield to bury my aunt tomorrow. The tenant, Simon, was in poor health and living in squalid conditions. No, I'm disgusted to show you this, but you may as well see it. Just a bad way to live. In a rare move, Paul asked the landlord to give Simon extra time to sort his life out. So when we come back on Wednesday next week, yeah. there can be no argument. Top man. Now Steve and Paul are back to see whether Simon has stuck to his side of the bargain. If he's not in the final throes of moving out, we will actually help him on his way. So we will evict him, because he's got no tenancy rights, no nothing. He's there as a guest to the landlord, under sufferance. If he's still in the flat, this time there'll be no second chances. Well, with a bit of luck, he might have gone, might he? We live in hope. Hello, sir. How are you doing? Nice to see you, sir. 
Simon is still at the flat, but he's almost ready to leave. We've had a good old clean-up, bud. Yeah. Cat's all gone. Uh, yeah, I put them away yesterday when he's killed. All right. Is it your telly in that, or is that...? Yeah, that's one of the outside. So are you moving stuff into here, or what? No, he's going into the back room. Now officially homeless, Simon doesn't know where he will live in the future. I'm going to wait for the right? council to see if they'll... When are they coming? I've got to go there at 2 o'clock. So what are they doing? Are you, have they housed you for tonight, then? Uh, yes, I think so. I think so. Are they actually going to rehouse you? I don't know. OK. I don't know about that. Can we give you a lift down the council? Uh, if you don't mind, that would be nice. We'll just make sure you're off the premises, sir. There's <laughs> <laughs> no always an alternative motive, yeah, isn't it? You know what I mean? No, he's been all right. Well. No, nah, he's a good lad, bless him. Keys in hand, Paul's gamble has paid off. Thank you for keeping to time. It's been a traumatic week for Simon. After eight years, he's leaving the house for good. It was an absolute nightmare. The funeral went well, um, but... Knowing I had to come back to all this was just the worst week of my life. It's a situation Paul sees on a regular basis. You've got my phone number. Yes. If there's anything we can do going forward to help, right. we will. Right, thank you Take very care. Much, Paul. All right, yeah, that's I right. Will call you if thank you for keeping your advice. end up. I'll, well, thank you very much. Yeah, it really helps. <laughs> right, You're lucky. Take Bye. care. Bye -bye. Simon might be able to sort a roof over his head for tonight, but his long term future is uncertain. Next time, a routine eviction turns into a battle for Paul and Phil. To coin the legal term, they're on their arse in the street uh, fighting to come back in. The shutters come down on Stuart and Vic. Sure, needs to remain open. I'll phone the police, son. How old are the children? And the agents execute an emergency break-in. He said the children were in here. 